On Joy News Agenda today, though, we're focusing on the provision of infrastructure in senior high schools in the central region and how school authorities in the region are managing the current situation. Uh, Richard Kujinaku has been traveling to some of the schools in the region and is reporting uh, inadequate infrastructure has forced many of these schools to study under canopies and uncompleted structures. The free senior high school bus have rung, and they are still tolling across the country. They are echoing everywhere. Free SHS is here! The fanfare is still deep within the hearts and minds of many people. Oh, I've heard that if you, if you are enjoying the free SHS, you know pay um, school fees. So, yes, so that will help me more in my brothers that who are in the primary school. Like, as in the one that they will use to pay my school fees, they will help in, they will rather help in their um, school fees. In all of this, many challenges have been encountered in the process and same have been overcome, but a greater proportion still persists in spite of the smiles on the faces of many parents whose children are the immediate beneficiaries of the policy. The greatest challenge that still towers across the many schools scattered across the country is that of infrastructure. The challenge of infrastructure remains as pronounced as the free SHS itself. The decision by stakeholders of Adisade College to revise downwards the intake of SHS1 students effective the 2016-2017 academic year due to inadequate accommodation facilities coupled with the dissolution of one temporary house. New House 1 reduced the intake from 920 students in the 2015-2016 academic year to 423 for the 2016-2017 academic year, a percentage reduction of 54. It must be mentioned that the document by stakeholders on admissions served as the guide for the 2016-2017 SHS-1 admissions and shall remain so for the years ahead till accommodation facilities in our college improve. The headmaster of Adesada College, William Kusiyabwa, was very candid about the challenge during the school's anniversary recently. The challenge has forced many schools to cut down their admission intake. In many of the schools that I have traveled to in the central region, the evidence is clear. Many projects have stalled for many years. Those that have been completed have been sharply done. And even though government has spent millions of Ghana cities on such projects, the schools cannot make use of them. Such structures continue to stand in most of the schools waiting to collapse. In the year 2012, a new classroom block was commissioned for the use of Form 4 students. Unfortunately, we had to evacuate the building due to some structural problems. Last year, a contractor employed by the government came round with some workers and began some semblance of work on the building. But they left after a very short time. Until date, the classroom block still stands empty. It is very dangerous studying in a building which is adjacent to one that can collapse any second. It is a heartfelt plea that work on this building be completed as soon as possible. Head prefect of Wesley Girls Senior High School, as she then was, Akosia Mantibia Buampon, narrated the sordid state of affairs during the school's anniversary recently. Apart from these stored projects, many of the senior high schools continue to study under weird conditions. How does it feel being under the canopy? It feels very hot and wet. When you're learning, sometimes you don't even feel comfortable sitting at the place. You feel like coming out of the canopy to a more comfortable place. When I is teaching, you see most people holding their fans, fanning themselves. The whole canopy is very, very hot. Students of Academy of Christ the King telling tales of how studying under canopies is like to join news. The school is located in Cape Coast, a city many proudly describe as the citadel of education. Teaching and learning has to go on under the canopy, with the same canopy serving as the dining hall of the school. 
uh, the administration work has not been handed over. We, we, don't, we can't even find a contractor to hand over. Uh, Lent, uh, he says that he needs uh, some payment needs to be made before he hands over. And, and this one is an uncompleted, as you see, uh, classroom block that we started. This one is, uh, it was done by the PTA to help. That was, uh, we started it last year when the, we, we, we realized that we had to put the student on the canopy. So we rushed in, but um, PTA funds got finished and then we had to uh, finish. But we, we finished about two of them. As you can see that we, we accommodate students. Please have completed that student can sit under. If it rains, then they, they, they definitely have to move yeah, because the wind directions, yes, so whichever direction will affect them. Yeah, so teachers had a tough time um, dealing with uh, that, but um, we had to cope with it. We will appeal to government that um, as they have started this noble project, which we also want to support and then make sure that it, it becomes a reality. We also want to appeal to government to come to the schools and see the problems that we have. We have a lot of problems, especially um, buildings that uh, must be completed to make sure that students sit comfortably and enjoy this free uh, uh, SHS. Co Williams is a teacher of the school. He's been teaching under the canopy and other uncompleted structures in the school. The Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research about three months ago cited inadequate funding as one of the main reasons for the erosion of quality education at all levels in Ghana. Presenting findings on ISA's latest report on the education sector at the University of Ghana, Professor Jonathan Fletcher, a researcher, indicated that government have not been able to balance improved access with funding. He recalled that there were times at the secondary school level where classes used to have about 35 people in a class. But now classes record as many as 80 or 90 students, following the emphasis of making education more accessible. A stark reality in Ghana's senior high schools as the implementation of the free senior high school kickstarts. Before the introduction of the e-school project by the elsewhere um, NDC government, I was of the view that there were a lot of get fund projects that needed to be completed. And seriously, they were to serve very good purposes. You go to schools in Cape Coast, some of them have had that, but midway, no funding, some bottlenecks, the project are sitting down. Then quickly, we're able to get money from somewhere to do community day school. It's not a bad idea. You cannot just put a community day school somewhere without thinking of where the student will stay and come to school. That aside, the get fund issue, I, I am surprised that we always want to introduce a new thing when the old ones, we have not been able to make them work. Because there are a lot of schools where you see community day school projects, but they are not working because apparently either change of government or even in the course of the same government um, in power, we abandon it and rush in for another thing. So it's a challenge. And for me, until we go back to do things right and we stop politicizing virtually everything in Ghana, our education will suffer. Because seriously, I can't imagine what we can tell ourselves, you go to a school, a school that could have accommodated so many students, either as day students or boarders, project from um, get fun is suffering, it cannot be moved because the project has been abandoned. Yet, we want all our children to go to school. So, it's, it's, it beats common sense to, to, to humbly say this, it just beats common sense. Kwabin Chukredu is a senior assistant registrar at the University of Cape Coast. His area of specialty is on education. Now questions why existing schools continue to grapple with many challenges of infrastructure while e-blocks and other community day senior high schools were built several kilometers away from the communities, making access to the schools difficult. Richard Kwejonyakon, Joy News, Cape Coast. And that's our agenda today. Richard Kwejonyaku, our central regional correspondent.
far that story for us. Uh, and quick uh, developments at the New Times Corporation, where we, ha we hear staff of the New Times Corporation here in Accra uh, are demonstrating this morning in front of their offices. They want better conditions of service. Uh, and the last time they had a salary increment, they say, was some seven years ago. Well, MFA uh, Dradosi is on the ground for us this morning. Uh, we're joining her live now via telephone to get the, the updates on, on this situation. MFA, you are the New Times Corporation this morning. Describe exactly what is happening on the ground. Right. So, Mama, we are currently at the Times Corporation. Now, here are people are clad in red and black, numbering about some 25 to 30 members here. Now, they are complaining of poor conditions of service over the years. Speaking to the leader, who is acting in the name of Mrs. Um, Budo, she tells me that management, the business management several times, that management has failed to honor its promise by increasing their salaries. And also, they are understanding that management has used some of their salaries as collateral after they went for a loan at the Ghana Commercial Bank. And so that's why this morning they are protesting. Now, earlier when we had the managing director trying to enter this premises, but then he was actually prevented. This demonstration is not expected really to go throughout the day. They said they will return um, back to their offices after they've been able to not protest um, for management to listen. Hello, MFA. Hello, Mamadi. Yeah. So, MFA, has there been any feedback in terms of is there a response uh, from managers of the New Times Corporation? Do we know what they're saying? Okay. And we haven't been able to speak to any of the management because if you were not even allowed, they've actually locked their doors. So, we put it in for out to have access to the managing director to speak to him. But then we are still around the premises. And so, we'll try and get feedback from some of the management and then get their view on the matter. Hmm. All right, MFA, we'll leave it here. We know there will be more details later on this morning on News Desk. Uh, that's my yeah. colleague, MFA Dratosi, at the New Times Corporation, where there's a demonstration underway with workers asking for better conditions of service.